All right, hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about the best trash characters in Marvel Strike Force. Uh, you may be asking yourself, well, why do I care about the best trash characters in Marvel Strike Force? Well, uh, a lot of them do, still do have uses in niche applications, and they can mean the difference between a win or loss in some of your uh, in some of your battles. So, and you'll be surprised; some of them are actually still in the meta. So, uh, before we get started, please consider a like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content and you find this informational. Uh, Let's get going. All right, so coming in at number five, America Chavez. Now, America Chavez is very specific to war defense and to adjacents, right? So you'll see some of these abilities are to the entire team. Some of these are abilities are on, you know, are uh, universal, meaning there's not restricted by war defense, offense, or whatever, right? But America Chavez specifically on war defense, fill speed bar by 25% for adjacent allies. Uh, very annoying if you put them if you put America Chavez on defense with somebody you want to go first and so it's basically a speed meta right you want uh, if you put uh, America Chavez in between let's say like uh, Gwenom or uh, with uh, Void Knight Void Knight already gets 25% well now Void Knight now it gets 50% and then Gwenom also goes and once you get Gwenom going and if you can trigger some of the uh, your, your, your opponents into the red which gets carnage going, it becomes a total disaster. So, and that's just one prime example you see that's very popular in war right now, uh, amongst other things, right? It's really about gaining the initiative. And so you'll find America Chavez to be useful on war defense if you actually care about war um, and war is something that's important to you. All right, so let's move on to number four. Number four is Loki. Now. Loki is very is comes in ahead of America Chavez because Loki's not restricted by war defense. So this happens no matter what wherever Loki is used. But the reason he's lower on this list is because it's actually restricted to his mechanism only applies to Mystic Controller allies by 10%. So again, you're seeing a theme here, right? Filling speed by by bar by a certain percentage. And therefore, it gives your team the it can give your team the initiative, and therefore forces someone else to counter with something that goes faster than what you're you're offering. Now, normally, again, this is most likely used in uh, in a war application. Um, usually, you see this with uh, like an Eternals combination because if you speed up, uh, fill a uh, Cersei speed bar, then Cersei can go, and it actually her ultimate uh, speed bar rewinds. So it uh, gives you a significant advantage, which will then give you some breathing room for Icarus to do his thing. So, but yeah, Loki comes in at number four. Number three is Echo. Now, uh, to be honest with you, I personally do not use Echo that much, but you're starting to see a lot more characters that uh, have kind of this cheating effect where they're just constantly assisting. Um, and I, if you remember a, a few seasons back in Cosmic Crucible, uh, Echo was a mainstay because they just it was, it was completely negate all the assists that were happening. Uh, mind you, I, I would guarantee you they're going to bring that back at some point. They're going to recycle some of these buffs. And so Echo uh, does provide that mechanism. While this character does not have blind, reduce the assist chance for enemies by 100%. So if you run into a battle where you're just saying, man, these people, these characters get non-stop assists and they're just attacking 20 times a turn, well, Echo might be something that you would want to use. Now, again, let me very let me preface that this is a purely luxury build. Um, and my my Echo is I want to say probably like level 80 or something like that. It's not very high, and so if uh, if the if the match starts and they delete Echo out, that uh, you're going to be in trouble. But the point is that a lot of uh, people that I've been uh, I know of. Uh, as a pure luxury build for that specific instance, we'll have Echo high enough to where uh, you can at least survive a while. And again, I'm not sure if the actual assist chances persist. I'm pretty sure they don't, but, uh, but yeah, Echo comes in at number three. Again, very niche applications on some of this stuff. Uh, number two, Emma Frost. Emma Frost surviving surviving for, for six years now. I think she came out maybe a year into it, so maybe five and a half years. Applied minus 10% speed to all enemies. That just happens. So if if I have a speed, if one of your characters has a speed of 100, well now when they roll into the fight, they have a speed of 90. And again, this is a turn-based game, so speed matters a heck of a lot. 
And so the only characters that kind of prevent this, and, and, and let me know in the comments, I, I know Apocalypse does. Apocalypse prevents, uh, uh, cannot be, uh, reduce, have the reduced speed. I can't remember if, uh, uh, if Mephisto offers it or some other characters, but the point is there's very few counters to this. Um, and you don't need Emma Frost to be high and it can be significant, it can be very powerful um, on any, you know, whenever you see something where you want to, again, get the advantage and they don't have one of those characters where it says, nope, can sp speed can only be reduced by slow, um, then this is gonna work out for you. So again, I, I use Emma Frost all the time in today's game in various situations and applications. So, and last but not least, Cable, Cable, oh Cable. <laughs> so Cable does not need to be high. And the reason Cable is so special is uh, on spawn, fill speed bar by 5% for self and all allies. And you're like, well, how is that better than Emma Frost? Because Emma Frost's passive has a counter, right? There's a, has a countering ability where they can't have their speed stat reduced. Well, speed bar uh, uh, for uh, by five percent is applicable even in today's, uh, especially in arena. And I'll show you here in a little bit. If you see my arena videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. But you can slot cable in additively, uh, either on defense or offense in war and arena, more specifically. And you're gonna get that five percent bump. And you're probably thinking, well, five percent is not that much. Well more in arena it matters a lot because most arena metas devolve into mirror matches and then someone finds the picks the weakest member drops them to then slot someone like cable in or kang more than likely that's why kang was so popular but kang, kang is not on this list because he's not a trash character but, uh, but Kang's uh, passive 5% is only on offense. So it doesn't work if you're on defense. So that's why Cable does the same thing Kang does in terms of the speed bar gain. Doesn't have it anywhere near the offensive capabilities, but also works on defense, right? The speed bar gain. So again, all of this is about gaining the initiative. And uh, usually, uh, so far anyway, irrespective of any mirror matches, Whoever goes first tends to gain control of the match and win, right? And that's why Cable has survived for so long. And even on offense, even in the Mephisto meta, and I'll show you here in a little bit, or I'll show you right now, even in the Mephisto meta, as you can see here, this is my offensive team. Cable, Kang, Old Man Logan, and, and, and I know some people, and some people are like, well, I, so you look, look at everybody on defense. This is what it devolves into. I know people on my last arena video, oh, if you use Black Knight, da, 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 and you, you're easily gonna win. Well, apparently not at the, a better rate than this because otherwise no one would have shifted their defense, right? Um, because if you, again, force a coin flip, you're either gonna have to do this or you're gonna have to go with this offense because you're either gonna coin flip and my point being is that you're you're probably not none of these people are probably winning at a higher rate than this this is 100 percent. i have never lost using this composition so if it's 100 percent, if you use anything less on defense or or on offense it probably is not 100 percent. maybe it's 80 percent. maybe it's 90 percent. it still ain't 100 percent. otherwise none of these people would have reacted and done the exact same thing because that's what I had on my defense. So the so point is that uh, even as a trash character, Cable still has relevance and, and mind you, just wait. They will release another character at, at some point in the future where they're not going to be garbage and they're going to have something they're going to have something silly like on spawn fill speed bar by 6% for for self and all allies and i guarantee you people are going to scoop it up people are going to scoop it up because they know understand the power of the of gaining that initiative and getting that speed bar ahead of everyone else 
uh, in, in matches like Arena or game modes like Arena. So, all right, that's going to be it for this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. The actual sequence or the numbers don't really matter. I mean, we're not here to have this kind of like a sports debate. Oh, why do you got to be number three? Or one? Who cares? The point is that these are all trash characters that you can still find use for in the game in certain situations. And surprisingly enough, Cable still has relevancy in the Mephisto meta. This garbage trash <laughs> character uh, because of this very unique passive um, was well, not unique Kang has or something very similar but just doesn't have it on defense right so but anyways that's it for this one please like and subscribe and you the content uh, what, what am I even saying just just hit that button 